Man, you know I'm happy if I get to go back to Chicago. No one requests Chicago. I, I, I saw this come in. I said, no effing way. Let's go, boys. <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome to Libre X. Hope everyone's having a good day. I know I am, man, because I get to do Chicago, like I said. Uh, we're going to Chicago 9, which I have, I didn't know there was nine of them. That's crazy. Uh, this is their ninth studio album, if you couldn't have guessed. Uh, <laughs> it was released in 1977. Oh, no, Lee. What was it? 77, right? Go to the top, scroll. 77, September. Uh, this is the last um, album to feature Terry. Um, it was four months after, I guess, it was released. The uh, incident happened with him, which I feel like is um, absolutely devastating. It's the last one to also be produced by longtime associate of the band, James uh, Guerco. I guess that's how you pronounce it. This wasn't a single or nothing. Um, this is honestly, it's on side two. It's called Taking It On Uptown. Vocals by Terry. It was written by Fred Kagan and Terry. Um, this is a request from our patron, Maureen. Thank you for your support, Maureen. I really, uh, really, <laughs> I really appreciate it. I really, really do. I'm excited to do a Chicago track, so let's go. If y'all aren't subscribed, please help brother out. Click that icon right below my face. I would really appreciate it. And um, yeah, leave a like and a comment too, if you don't mind. That's it. We're square. All right. Taking it on uptown by Chicago. Three, two, one, go. Now we need to do some Kansas. We'll have our set Boston, Chicago, Kansas.
What? That's crazy. That that felt like a straight up rock, almost like hard rock song by them. There was no brass featured. There wasn't really much of a funk kind of element, you know, that they sometimes incorporate. Because they're like a genre, like blending machine, kind of like Santana in a way. Like they just, um, they do whatever the frick they want, basically. <laughs> and it's great. I love it. Um, Terry, just incredible, man. Like it's it's crazy that he can play guitar and sing that well at the same time. You know, like he's that's that's not easy to do, uh, especially playing on the technical level that he plays on that he played on. It, he was incredible. He absolutely was. And uh, we should be doing more of them on the channel. Like we've done a handful of videos. I am well aware of his genius. You know, I've done twenty five or six to four. I've done the live one, Tanglewood. I've done the whole thing. You know, I've done a couple songs from Tanglewood actually so like I I really like Chicago like I said like, I'm excited when I get to do them they don't pop up much same thing with Genesis you know Genesis pops up I'm like yeah let's go you know <laughs> um Chicago is one of the first bands I got introduced to on the channel that like really took me by you know uh the horns I guess you could say and just like here you go that's the way to go and then there was that 25 uh or 64 performance of Tanglewood absolutely just revolutionized my mind I was like what did I just watch? Did I just watch the greatest guitar solo in history? Um, Cause I think I did, you know what I mean? But then there's been so many contenders that I've listened to since then, you know, that could rival that solo. I haven't found one that technically beats it. I found ones that maybe rival it or equal it, but I can't find one that, you know, it's kind of like the NFL rules, you know, it's like if there's not enough evidence to overturn what I've already you know, said, then I'm not going to overturn it. I'm just going to stick with it. Honestly, I still think it's the best solo I've ever seen, even though I've seen, I've seen so many good ones. Um, and he was killing it here. And this definitely felt like a song that he, you know, wrote and he did. Um, and he did the vocals too. And he just completely owned this track. Um, it, it was literally just, um, him and Danny, basically. <laughs> That's what it felt like. And, uh, oh, and the guy in bass, what's his name? Um, Pete, yeah, Pete Cetera on bass. You could hear him really well, too. Um, I like the backup singers. I don't know who they were exactly. Let's see. Um, no, doesn't say. There's really nothing on this song. Like, it's there, but it's it's one of those songs that I guess are, is kind of a deep cut for them, maybe. Um, but I love that. And if that's one of their deep cuts that's scary because <laughs> that's that's an excellent song right there i mean the construction of it was great i mean it was like four minutes long um and they just kind of you know all based it around that you know riff but they were also blending so many different little genres and styles into one four minute song you know but for the most part to be it felt like a straight up hard rock song for the most part there's little bits and pieces where they you know maybe felt a little soulish or a little funkish like you know their usual sound that i'm you know uh, i guess uh more familiar with but i loved this i thought this was absolutely great danny was doing all kinds of <laughs> not dotted quarter notes what the hell i don't know man he was doing some like staccato stuff on there it sounded great whatever he was and it just the way that he kind of filled in the rest of the space while um terry did the vocals and the guitar danny was holding everything else down with pete man that was um that's what it felt like i didn't hear any brass i didn't hear anything like that so i'm guessing it was just them and uh i loved every second of that so thank you maureen i really appreciate it you know i always love doing these guys um it's kind of a short one you know it's not like it's a super long track um i would definitely say that you know uh 
Terry's guitar work in this and his vocals are definitely my favorite part uh, with Danny's drumming coming in a very, very close second though, because he was, um, he was all over this shit as they say. <laughs> he really was. Um, and you see, like they just make me happy, man. I don't know what it is about it. Like, I really don't know. I can't put it into words, but there's um, a little bit of glee that I get when I get to do Chicago for some reason. And like I said, I haven't done them that much. I've definitely done, I've definitely done at least five videos for them, five or six, you know, and they're spread out. But every song I've listened to, it's left me with this kind of feeling of glee, but also somberness, you know, at the same time because of what happened. But um, it doesn't really matter, you know, at the end of the day, because uh, he put out nine incredible albums. And I don't know if he did any solo stuff or anything else. You know, Terry um, is an absolute legend and I will take his name into this new world that we're going into. And I'll make sure that I'll try my best, at least, to make sure that he's not forgotten any of these guys because there's a lot of these artists that have gotten right there except three of those bands right there you can't see the last one but they have their fans obviously they're still um listened to and they probably will be listened to for a very long time uh, emerson lincoln palmer jethro toll um i don't and especially you know jay gellis too but eventually like it's all gonna go away you know and in one form or another, it's all going to be gone and it's going to be up to the oral history to keep the music alive. And um, I'm never going to forget Terry's name just from that very first video. And um, he's always kind of had a special place in my heart. And that's so weird to say because it's just YouTube videos. But at the same time, it is me discovering music for the first time. And when I first heard Terry, um, it kind of just it blew my mind. But it also kind of just changed my view on what you know you can do with guitar. Like it, it was... Uh, it was a very insane moment for me to listen to 25 or 64, but then you get to like, now I'm listening to Jimi Hendrix and stuff too. And there's so many good guitarists. I mean, like it, it's not fair. It's like, uh, it's insane how many good ones there are. I was going to use a metaphor, but I, I couldn't think of it in time. So it's gone. It's fine. So if you have any other suggestions about Chicago, like I said, leave it down below. I'm out of here. Thanks Maureen. Bye. Patreon right there. Right. Hide real quick. Sorry. Um, there's a link in the description. There's a, also a, a Patreon only Discord. There's a full album reactions to Blind Faith, the Beatles, all kinds of stuff on there. Um, there's also a PayPal as well in the description if you want to leave a tip or send a request in that way. That's it, my friends. Have a good day. Bye bye.